Today we're going to talk about the brand new product in the United States, the Hive Alive Pollen Patties. I'm very excited to share these with you today, folks, especially after what I've learned this last week and a half doing some research on them. Hive Alive is an amazing product from what I've learned. I'm just starting to incorporate it into my hives. Over the winter, I fed the Hive Alive fondant patties and the bees absolutely loved them. So I will be falling back on those fondant patties for future uh, resources for the bees. Did an amazing job. So now we're warming up, spring's starting to show some signs, and I'm introducing some Hive Alive pollen patties into my colony to see what those can do for my bees. And after doing a little bit of research, I've learned a lot about Hive Alive, and I want to share some of that with you today. I want to give you some resources to where you can go and educate yourself a little more, because what I'm going to tell you is just going to be highlights on different points. So if you want to break it down and get into it a little bit more, I'm going to give you the tools to do so. So without any further delay, let's dive right into these Hive Alive pollen patties. Okay, so the very first thing I noticed when I opened the box from Hive Alive is it looks like this. Okay, so you've got your pollen patties, you've got two stacks of pollen patties, and there is 10 per case. So you've got a 10 pound case, and these are one pound patties. Now you can see how much longer these are than normal patties. Um, at least for what I'm used to. I'm used to a big wide patty that's not quite as long. Um, I like this. This gives me options as someone who sells nukes. I can take and cut these down into fourths and to thirds. I surely wouldn't want to early spring introduce a full patty. And the reason for that being is small hive beetles, folks. They are some nasty, nasty insects. They're actually a very, very bad pest for the bees. And I'll tell you, if you get infested with them enough, I almost think they're worse than mites. Because, And the reason I say that is because with Varroa mites, we have tools that we've actually seen drop in lower mite counts. Um, take oxalic acid. Um, at the right time of the year, it does wonders for the mite count. It just dwindles. As where with the small hive beetles, it seems like we set a bunch of traps and we cross our fingers. <laughs> Or we throw in some Swiffer sheets, we throw on a fancy entrance, but let me tell you folks, you get hive beetles and get a bad infestation, it's not no fun. It can take the fun right out of your beekeeping in a, in a heartbeat. So for that reason, I don't, I do not encourage anybody to feed a full patty in early spring. Let your colonies get built up, let them get super, super strong. Um, when I stick a chunk of patty in there, I want it so that the bees can cover that chunk of patty and guard it and keep the beetles away. If I was to stick this whole thing in my nuke and the populations are down, I'm only going to cover half the patty. So I've got all of this up here for the beetles to come into, lay their eggs, the eggs turn to larva, and out comes the adult beetles. That's not what you want. That's not what you want. So don't introduce or be cautious with introducing full patties early in the season. Don't want to get small hive beetles, but you do want to use a good product. So let's continue talking about this a little bit more. Some of my research this week led me over to Frederick Dunn's channel. Um, if you're not familiar with Frederick Dunn, I'll leave a link down in the video description. But Frederick did a, uh, an interview with Dara Scott, the creator of Hive Alive. And in that video, I learned a great deal. Um, Frederick had some great questions, and they really helped me out. I've actually wrote quite a few of the things down here that I thought was interesting that I'm going to share with you today. So, let's just dive right in on that. And then after we get done, um, I'm going to share some more links and some more resources that you can go and investigate this a little bit further if you'd like to. And after I give you these facts, I'm going to share some video of last Saturday when we were in the 70s. I installed the pollen patty. And we're going to see what that looked like, how I went about putting it on, and then I want to show you what it looks like today. How have the bees responded? Do they like it? Are they ignoring it? What's going on with that pollen patty? So first, let's get into some facts. So as I mentioned, these are one pound patties, and when you buy a case, you get a 10 pound case. That would be 10 patties. Each patty contains 15% real pollen collected in California. Um, I don't know specifically what 
source they're getting the pollen from, but I do know it's 15% real pollen. And thanks to Frederick Dunn's video, I know that is collected in California. So that gives a grand total of 15.5% protein per patty. They also have a high concentration of Hive Alive at one tablespoon per patty. And they contain seaweed extract, which adds additional nutrition for the bees. There is a complete range of essential amino acids, trace minerals, and vitamins required for brood rearing in healthy colonies. Studies have shown Hive Alive increases the brood and honey production. It also improves the intestinal well-being of our bees, which is very important. And if you watch Frederick Dunn's video, um, you're going to learn from Dara that the studies show that the longer that Hive Alive is present in the colony, um, the better the bees do. What it does is it lowers the pathogens in the colony the longer it's in there. So if you would put Hive Alive in, say, your SERP when you're feeding, and the bees store it in some frames, that's going to make it be in the colony a little longer, and therefore make the well-being of the bees much better. Now I do want to say that um, Hive Alive is working with Global Patties, and Global Patties is in Canada. Um, Randy Oliver did a study um, comparing the different brands of pollen patties, and if you go down in my video description, I'll leave a link for that study, and you'll see that Global Patties came out right on top. Now since Hive Alive and Global Patties is working together to make this patties, that is an added benefit. You're basically getting a global pollen patty with Hive Alive added to it. So think about that. You're getting the best pollen patty and you're getting the really good uh, benefits of Hive Alive and lowering the pathogens in your colonies. So I'm going to leave a link, like I said, down in the video description over to Frederick Dunn's video. Um, I encourage you all to check that out. I'm going to leave a link to Randy Oliver's test. And then I found a test on YouTube that Hive Alive did um, overseas. I believe they did it in Australia, but I, I don't want to say for sure. And that test shows the pathogens being lowered greatly in the colony. So without any further delay, let's hop back to last Saturday when it was 74 degrees. Boy, it's absolutely beautiful out here, folks. It's very rarely do we get to 70 degrees in March, but we got today and tomorrow to take advantage of these warmer weathers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a small section of Hive Alive pollen patties um, to each of my nukes out here today. And I thought I'd take you along and show you how I'm going to go about this. Now it's very early in the season to be adding uh, pollen patties and you got to watch that you don't do that too early because what can happen is the bees can start brooding up and then the temperatures drop again in which case the bees don't like to leave brood and they end up freezing and dying because they don't recluster. So what I like to do is I like to wait on mother nature to provide pollen first. In that case the maple trees. The maple trees are on the verge of busting right now and I look for these next two days to push them over the top and then to start producing pollen and nectar. So for that reason I'm going to go ahead and stick on a small section of one of these Hive Alive patties. Now let me show you what I've done. I've broken one patty down into four sections here and this is what I get. So they, they are pretty decent size sections. Another concern about pollen patties is small hive beetles. So if you give them this full patty and the bees are only able to consume or cover part of it, that's going to leave this open down here for uh, small hive beetles, in which case can be a mess for you so feed them small sections and that's what we got here so I've broken one patty down into four sections to show you about the size of chunk I'm going to give each of my colonies today now if we take a close look here at Stanley this is the Stanley colony everybody looks real good down here we've got Sue I mean, everybody's just doing great. It's so nice to see the girls. This colony here, I don't think it made it. 803, doing well. 
So I need to go in here eventually and see what, what happened in here and kind of come up with a conclusion to why I think they died. But that's not high on the priority list right now. Of course, taking care of the ones that's alive ranks highest. So what I want to do here is open this up after I get my smoker gone and clean out some of these dead bees here and there. Look, they're going to fall out. So anyway, we're going to get, top off the mountain camp method on all these hives today and I'm going to give them a section of the pollen patty from Hive Alive. So, as we can see here, most of the fondant patty is gone. It's been consumed by the bees. They've cleaned it all up except for this edge over here where it's folded. They probably can't get through the plastic there. The mountain camp method, they really haven't done a whole lot with, but it is rock hard. So I don't need to give them any more of the mountain camp method. Um, what I would like to do is lay that pollen patty right down in this area. You take it, lay it right here. We'll do. Gonna try and work this wrinkle and lay it flat over here. There we go. We'll just rip it open more on the bottom. So now we've got part of the Hive Alive fondant patty underneath of here. Let's see the bees get back down there. There right, we go. And then down here we've got the Hive Alive pollen patty. So we're doubling it up with the Hive Alive. You can see they're completely ignoring this mountain camp so I don't need to top that this colony looks good and we can move on so this is interesting on Stanley they are eating the mountain camp method and they're eating the fondant like they don't have a preference of one over the other you can see they've ate a lot of that fondant patty that's worked out very very well to get the bees through the winter so Keep that in mind, folks. If you're if you're in doubt getting your bees through winter and you don't think you have enough food stores, fall back on these fondant patties by Hive Alive. The bees are really enjoying them. Look at them. I'd like to tear this one open more, like I did on the other one. So I got it tore open more. We'll lay the pollen patty right here. Hopefully, without any, harming any of these bees in the plastic, we can gently lay this back down in there. There, I think that'll work. 
So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to close it back up and move on. And we'll check it the next time the weather provides and see how they're liking that pollen patty. Now look here. This is not something you want to find. Remember earlier, I opened this entrance and swept out the dead bees that were here. And look what I found. Right there. That's a small hive beetle. It's dead. But that tells you that this colony does have a few of them. And that's not really something you want to see when you're sticking in pollen patties. So just another reminder of why you only want to introduce small sections of pollen patty at a time. Now that's going to be based on the strength of your colony of course. This is a nuke so a small section is perfect. So now let's fast forward to Thursday when we hit 52 degrees and I was able to peek in on one of the colonies to see how the bees are responding to the pollen patty. Check this out. Okay so let's take a quick look and see how they're doing here. You can see they're still eating on the mountain camp, but if we lift up this fondant patty plastic, look at that. They've actually ate quite a bit. If you look where the paper is and there's no patty under that, they've ate all that just since the other day. They look really healthy, don't they? They look really good. So I'm not going to bust any more of them open. I just wanted to get a quick look, see how the bees are responding to it. What we could do maybe is try and lift up this paper here and get it out of their way. Look at them eating on that. They like it. Pretty cool to see that they're responding very well to the pollen patty. Let's close this back up. So as you can see, the bees are enjoying the pollen patty. When you know it's 22 degrees outside right now, the weather's made a wicked change for us. But that's how it is in March. This is our transition month when winter is fighting with spring and it isn't always so pretty and today it's not one of those pretty days so um, anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it's gave you some insight on the hive alive pollen patties if you have any questions or comments you can leave those down below um, and if you enjoyed this video pound that like button folks and don't forget to subscribe so you can see more of my content um, like I said, have any questions, leave them down below. I do my best to answer them for you. And I highly recommend you go over and check out Frederick's video. He did a great job with that interview, and there's a lot of valuable information that you can gather by watching it. So thanks for watching. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday, folks.